Hello everyone and welcome. This is gonna be the uh, continuation. I'm actually just gonna leave this in the same playlist as the other one, as you can already tell by from the players for watching this one. We're gonna continue on with the DLC and the uh, learning from this Yops character. We're gonna talk to him. We're about to go into a casting with them, and then from there, we'll travel around, and I will be continuing to do the DLCs around uh, this beautiful. Kingdom of Bohemia. He's doing well, son. Father. Come now. You know who sired you. That doesn't matter now. I miss you, Amma. I miss you very much. You'll be fine. We're proud of you. For what? We let you down. I lost the sword. I let that bastard get away. Don't be so hard on yourself. There was nothing you could have done to save us. When someone has to live and carry the torch, that's for the sword. It's just a thing. You didn't want me fighting. Now look at me. Standing up to evil isn't the same as sowing its seeds. We did what was right. I have to leave you now. No, oh, please. You know I can't stay. Will I ever see you again? God knows. Make her proud. Don't go. I don't understand why there, there's a prayer at the bottom. The subtitles are totally off. But okay. Don't go. No. What on earth were you dreaming about? I couldn't wake you, and it's well past dawn. Sir Radzik wants you at the upper castle. The lords are in council with Yobbs. Right. I'll go straight away. What is it? It's just... I don't know how to address you anymore. All of a sudden, you're Sir Radzig's son, hobnobbing with lords and ladies. And here's me, as common as muck. Oh, give over, you idiot. Do I look like a lord to you? Not really. You're as much a lord as I am a nun. And I've never looked good in a habit. <laughs> Get out of here. Or I'll have you clapped in the stocks. I'm in my own room. How am I in a private area? Ah, oh, Hal. Are you going to the meeting with Margrave Jobst as well? I am. What about Istvan? I assume that we didn't catch him? No. Because if we had, you'd be the first one to know. Have no fear. We'll get him eventually. I hope you're right. Anyway, let's go and see what Jobst wants from us. My lords, Christ's blessings on you all. And on you, Lord Gaben. 
And this is my son, Henry. I didn't know you had a son, Sir Redzig. It came as a bit of a surprise to young Henry, too. <laughs> this gentleman here is John II of Liechtenstein, a member of my council. I'm honored, gentlemen. Come join us. Margrave Yobst was just about to tell us the reason for his visit. Your Grace. I'm sure we're all agreed, Your Graces, that all this unrest must come to an end. This kingdom needs a king. The question is, which king? My cousin, Wenceslas IV, who is being held in captivity. I have to confess, my lord, that your answer surprises me a little. If I'm correctly informed until recently, you sided with your other cousin, Sigismund. That I cannot deny, and I have always stated my position plainly. But times have changed. How they changed, Your Grace. Sir, there is one thing on which we undoubtedly concur. That King Wenceslas, unfortunately, did not inherit his father's gift for governing. Sadly, his failures have cost Bohemia, the nobles, and our whole Luxembourg family a great deal of money and effort. How did the king let it go so far, damn it? It's in his temperament. He cares only for wine, women, and the hunt. A king, in fact, who never wanted to be king. Then why didn't he just let his brother have the crown? <laughs> Young sir, the crown weighs heavy when there are duties to be performed. But to surrender it means giving up great privileges, too. But he did surrender power to his brother. When things started getting out of hand, Wenceslas appealed to Sigismund for help in restoring order. What you're saying, Wenceslas has invited him here? This is starting to make my head spin. Actually, it makes sense when you think about it. Sigismund wanted to re-establish the power of the whole House of Luxembourg. He thought if he helped Wenceslas win the Imperial Crown, in return his brother would help him become the King of the Romans and leave the actual reign of Bohemia and the Empire to him. Sigismund would govern while Wenceslas could carry on doing what he was best at, enjoying the life of the Imperial Court. Why wasn't Wenceslas crowned Holy Roman Emperor long ago? He was already elected King of the Romans. All he had to do was go and let the Pope put the damn imperial crown on his head. Who knows? Maybe he'd prefer hunting and consorting with bathhouse wenches to spending time with the Pope. Well, so would I, I must admit. <laughs> Sigismund's plan seemed sound enough, but it didn't quite work out, did it? It worked for a while. He and his brother reached an agreement. Sigismund took over administration of the kingdom and began planning Wenceslas' journey to Rome for the imperial coronation. But then Wenceslas realized he would just be a puppet with a crown. I must say, Margrave Jobst, Wenceslas and Prokop behave rather like naughty children in need of a good clout about the ears. Sigismund would agree. He was already planning his rule of Bohemia, and all of a sudden, the rug was pulled from under him. I'd say he lost his patience and decided he'd drag Wenceslas to the coronation, kicking and screaming if he had to. Just like a naughty child, as you say. So he abducted him and your brother Prokop too, if I heard correctly. Correct. And you helped him do it, if I heard correctly. Yes, your graces, it's true. I was there when Sigismund abducted Prokop. I thought everything could somehow be settled, that we could make my brother see sense. But Sigismund just wanted to put an end to the dispute once and for all, whatever the cost. There was nothing I could do to stop him. And that's one of the reasons why I'm here. Ah. The worst of it is that it was all for nothing. Instead of putting a stop to the revolt, it escalated it, and the result is this chaos we have today. That's true enough, sir. But I must admit now, I'm not sure what your position is. The king is incompetent, but we must protect him. The simple truth, gentlemen, is that for all of Wenceslas's faults, we have no one else. So we'll have to make do with his idleness. People like him, though. But what can we do now? Sigismund has the League of Lords behind him. Otto von Burgolf, 
I'm Rick von Rosenberg. The situation has gotten completely out of control. Now even the nobles of the League of Lords are realizing that Sigismund wasn't the right choice. So now Burgoff is on your side. Are we to assemble an army together with him and face Sigismund on the field of battle? We're not in Hungary now. Such affairs may be settled elegantly, without unnecessary hostilities or expenses. I have negotiated an alliance with the Hungarian bishops, the Polish, and of course the Czech nobility, against Sigismund. Every day he is losing the ground under his feet, and that's why I need your help too. What kind of help though? Sigismund has a massive army, and Rosenberg, Burghoff, and Prague are behind him. Do you have an army you could face him with? But that's not what I mean at all. There's been a revolt against Sigismund in Hungary. <laughs> efforts, and now he'll have to choose whether he wants to gain the Bohemian crown, which is a very risky enterprise, or hold on to the Hungarian one. He can't have both. And there's a tough struggle awaiting him in Hungary. I'm not sure he'll win, and Rosenberg and Burghoff know it too. They're not stupid. If the Bohemian nobility stands together, they will turn. We are men of little consequence, Margrave. Radzig here lost everything because of his alliance with Wenceslas. Sir Divish came within a hair of the same fate. Even Ratte is defenseless against Sigismund and the League of Lords. What's more, Your Grace, King Wenceslas languishes in captivity in Vienna. He can't rule too well from there. And what do you propose? To sit with your arms folded till the Bohemian lands are turned to ashes like scarlets? We have to put a stop to this senseless war! And do you know, sir, what the true position of the League of Lords is? I'm not on the best of terms with them at this moment, so you'll have to ask them yourselves. Yes! Why not? I'll go and visit Burgov at his castle and we'll see what he tells me. <laughs> you know, that's not such a bad idea, young sir. True. Though a little risky. I doubt Burghoff would harm a blue-blooded envoy. And you can find out what he has to say about developments, and what the League of Lords is planning. Then we'll decide what to do next. I'll help you compose a letter to him. I'd like Henry to come with me. Why not? He's proven himself an able investigator, and he'll also be a good bodyguard if anything should happen. And I'll send Sir John here to Kutenberg to be my eyes and ears there. I believe both your reports will help us get a better grip on the situation. When can you set out? Just as soon as I pack my things. Excellent. Margrave Jobst and I will draft the letter. Get ready, and we'll meet back here. A right, we're going on a I field trip. It would be best to write it in your name as Lord of Lypha. Quite so, Margrave. What exactly am I to write? Hmm. Oh, what isn't really the issue. The question is how. We need to learn where they stand on liberating the king and ousting Sigismund. If they'll make trouble or join our side, but... But we have to ask in a way that won't leave Sir Capon being run out of the castle with a whip. Exactly. How about writing that you're concerned about current events and that you want to see things settled peaceably, and then ask the opinion of the League of Lords? Very well said, sir. And what they want to do about freeing King Wenceslas? Whether they think liberating King Wenceslas IV might contribute to resolving the dispute? And what they plan to do about the god-awful mess in this country. What steps they envisage taking to end the pillaging of Bohemia by foreign armies? I couldn't have put it better myself. Well, I'd also venture to suggest one more. What is their stance on my... That is, the initiatives of Margrave Jobst of Moravia and a large part of the Bohemian nobility? Whether they plan to take action against them or support their efforts? You read my thoughts, sir. Cool, cool, cool. All right, guys. <clears throat> Uh, give me a second before we start further on this quest. There is a few other things I want to do around the fiefdom. So 
I'll, I'll be right back once I'm done doing that. All right, guys, let's go talk to my father. So, it looks like you're off on a mission. Yes, I can't wait. I don't want to dampen your spirits, my boy, but watch out. These are evil times, and who knows what can happen along the way. Not to mention that Bergov is no saint. Don't worry. I know. You've shown you can fend for yourself, but do take care. You'll be traveling as Lord Capron's bodyguard. You'll be there to make sure nothing untoward happens to him. Keep your eyes peeled and your ears wide open. What Bergov tells you is one thing, but what you see may be quite another. Rest assured, Father. And don't get embroiled in anything else. Just hand over the letter, hear out his reply, and return. Yes. Very well. Bergov is at Trotsky Castle. I think you'll find it quite an eye-opener. It's one of the finest castles in the land. It's three days' ride from here, so unless you hit a snag along the way, you'll be back soon enough. Any questions? Uh, just so you guys know, I've never done this before. Uh, I usually just got to that ending video where they're all riding into town, and that was it. I didn't play anything else after this. So this is, this is uh, my first time playing through this as well. I'm getting a bit lost in the Luxembourg lineage. It all seems a bit too tangled. The Luxembourgs have ruled the Empire and Bohemia for almost a hundred years now. Emperor Charles brought this land to prominence. When he was in power, things have never been so good. Wenceslas and Sigismund are his sons, but by different mothers. Jobst and Prokop are their cousins. They were entrusted with governing Moravia. But instead, they've been in a bitter armed feud for years. And now Sigismund's fallen out with Wenceslas. Wenceslas also had another brother, the youngest, John of Gerlitz, who was most probably poisoned. They seem like a hot-blooded lot. It's hard to keep up with their affairs, since they tend to change their alliances from one day to the next. Who is he really, this Jobst? The cousin of King Wenceslas. He's the Margrave of Moravia. I admit I don't know what to make of him myself. Until recently, he was allied with the League of Lords. For a time, he even served Rupert of the Palatinate against the King. And now suddenly, he's reversed his position. I don't know what led him to do it, and one can't help being suspicious. It's best to keep a watchful eye on him. But he really is the leader of the resistance against Sigismund these days. We'll just have to see how it all turns out. I'm a bit concerned so many people seem to think so little of King Wenceslas. You knew him, didn't you? What's he really like? <sighs> well, there's no straightforward answer to that question. He certainly makes a great hunting and drinking companion, but he can be very fiery and impetuous when things don't go how he'd like them. He never had much of a head for high office. He finds it tiresome. But once a man's grasped the scepter, it's hard to let it go again. You can't just abscond. You've seen for yourself what happens when he disappears for a few months. Better a bad but legitimate king than a bloody war over the throne. Who is this Prokop that Jobs spoke of? Jobs' brother, the king's cousin. He and Jobs warred over Moravian supremacy for years. Then they were allies for a while, betrayed Wenceslas and sided with Rupert of the Palatinate. But after Sigismund abducted Wenceslas, Prokop fermented a revolt against him and Sigismund had him captured. Politics. <laughs> make of it what you will. I, for one, can't make head or tail of it most of the time. The League of Lords and that Burgoff we're off to see. Who are they, exactly? The Lords of the powerful houses. Heinrich of Rosenberg, Otto of Burgoff, Heinrich of Raditz, and others. They're unhappy with the way their influence declined after Wenceslas surrounded himself with the lesser orders of nobility. They abducted the king years ago and made him bow to their will. They got away with it that time, and now they've joined forces with Sigismund and done it again. But now it seems that Sigismund's behavior is starting to rub them up the wrong way. So they may well be thinking twice. We'll see what Burgoff has to say. I don't know all that much about Sigismund. He's the king's younger brother and king of Hungary in his own right. Seven years ago, he led a crusade against the Turks and was defeated at Nicopolis. Some say it was due to the recklessness of the French knights, most of whom were mercilessly slaughtered. Sigismund is ambitious and capable, 
He might well make a better ruler than Wenceslas, but he's arrogant and to our misfortune, brutal. Not long ago, he himself was held captive by the Hungarian nobility. They dislike him as much as some of the Czech and German noblemen do his brother Wenceslas. Ironically, Wenceslas joined forces with Jobst to liberate him. And now this is how Sigismund repays his brother. There's no doubt about it. God does move in mysterious ways. Rupert of the Palatinate. That's a name I hadn't heard before today. Rupert is the Prince Elector of the Palatinate. What's a Prince Elector? The Prince Electors are dignitaries of the Holy Roman Empire who have the right to elect the King of the Romans, who would then be crowned Holy Roman Emperor by the Pope. Rupert took the title for himself with the help of three other Prince Electors, even though Wenceslas had already been appointed. Some of the nobility in the empire recognized Rupert's claim, but when he went to Rome to be crowned emperor, it turned into a fiasco. Now he's doing his utmost to get Wenceslas to acknowledge him, but so far without success. So, now we have two kings of the Romans. Jops sided with Sigismund for a while, but now he switched allegiance. He seems to do that quite a lot. That young man, Sir John of Liechtenstein, why is he here? The Liechtensteins are a powerful Austrian family with estates in Austria and Moravia. Sir John sits on Jops' council. Since the king's being held captive in Vienna, I suppose it makes sense to have a powerful Austrian house as allies. It could be very useful. Julian von Liechtenstein, I know as Ulrich von Liechtenstein, from A Knight's Tale, with, uh, starred by Heath Ledger. By the way, if you haven't seen that movie, it's a great movie. You should go, definitely go watch that. That's about all. Very well. Take the letter from Sir Hanush. And good luck, son. So what do you think of it all, Sir Divish? I think I don't know what to think. That makes two of us. If I didn't know anything about Yost, I'd say he's right and absolutely truthful. But... I've heard too much about him already. Hmm, likewise. But I do feel he's the one with the best chance to put things right. Well, we'll see what we learn from Burgov. If the League of Lords stands with Sigismund, then our chances pale, in spite of everything Yop said. We shall see. We shall see. All right, let's see if I can finally get the hell out of here. Oh, I gotta talk to this guy. Can I leave this room yet? Do you do other shit? Oh my god, I'm trapped. I'm trapped. Just forcing me into it. I believe we have written it well, gentlemen. Without a doubt. No one could deduce from this whether we are Sigismund's allies or foes. <laughs> I must travel back to Brno now, but soon I will go to Brandenburg and I will stop here on the way back. By then, Sir Capon should be back and we can discuss how to proceed. Right. Before you leave, my lord, there is one thing that gives me no rest. Why did Sigismund come as a foe? It makes no sense. If I may, sir, I think I can explain. Oh, please enlighten us, young sir. I live not far from Hungary, where Sigismund reigns. It is a savage country, and the constant war with the Turks has hardened the people. They need a monarch with an iron hand. So when Sigismund felt the wind of revolt, he reacted as he would at home. Only what works on the Hungarian nobles does not work here in Bohemia. Bringing order is one thing, but... Slaughtering and pillaging with a horde of barbarians, quite another. Uh, what purpose does that serve? But Sigismund did give the Bohemian nobles a chance to take his side. It was only when they refused his ultimatum that he lost patience and took to the sword. As for the barbarians, he could afford nothing better. The Hungarian nobility would gain nothing from joining his campaign in Bohemia. 
He didn't have enough coin for a regular army, and so he recruited the Cumans. What he does not pay them, they make up for in plunder. But in the end, he didn't have enough to even satisfy the Cumans. That's why he raided Gutenberg and Scarlets. He wanted the silver. That makes sense. My lords, how's the letter coming along? It's done. Then we can be on our way. Now remember what we said, boy. All you have to do is deliver the letter, listen to the answer, and come back here. Don't provoke Burkhoff in any way. Provoke? Me? Never, Uncle. We'll be back in a few days. Farewell, Your Graces. Come, Henry, my men are waiting. I wish you Godspeed. That visitor in the red, I swear I've heard his voice somewhere before. The Yops character. And Congratulations, you've completed the main story. If you'd like, you can still embark on side quests and activities, or just wander the world. You can end the game anytime afterwards by riding off the map with Sir Hans Capon's squad. Which, by the way, I've never done. Yeah, so if you actually do leave the map, that's amazing. Uh, I've never done that. Uh, so that's cool, but for now, I'm just going to go do, do DLC. Come now, Hal. My men are mustered in the courtyard. We can get going. I guess after I follow this guy. I've gotten to like a campsite with him and then like I just sit there and nothing ever happens. I don't know. I don't know if there's supposed to be a sequel to this game or what. Weird. Can we set off now, Henry? Oh, well, I'm going to do other stuff real quick, and then we'll, we'll set off later. There was one more thing I wanted to attend to. I see. We'll go on ahead and wait for you in the camp at Neuhof. I'll use the time for a hunt before we go. Very well. We'll meet up there as soon as I'm done. Hello, everyone. And uh, so it appears to me we're still doing some DLC. I don't think I've shown anyone the uh, Red Tide tournaments yet, so we're gonna do one of those real quick. I've done a couple of them so far. Usually when you win, you get the Lords of Liper armor sets, like leaves, the, the chest, the plate, and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, I don't know how many times I've completed it yet. I'm gonna do it one real quick for you guys. I'm using the axe. Before I do, I'm just gonna give myself a little bit of an edge. God bless you. I'd like to enroll in the big tournament. All right. As long as you've got the enrollment stake, Sir Hanish's rule is every contestant has to put up three score groschen. A score is 20. Of course. Here you are. I'll write your name down. Henry, you said. And I need to know what weapon you choose. I'm going to choose the axe and the shield. I've had plenty of practice with an axe and shield, so I'll go for that. Good. Get yourself ready. You're next in line. So it's best two out of three rounds. First round, I get to choose one. Second round, they choose one. And if I win one and they win one, and we go for a third round, Sir Hanish picks the weapon. Entry He's a big guy that was in the castle. Be Henry of Scalettes from the company of Sir Radzik Kabla, who will measure his skills He's not watching us as I point him out. Stenyek, apprentice to the Ratai scribe. Let us wish the combatants luck. I actually beat one guy called uh, P Black Peter. There's just a dude named Peter in all black. He got all upset I won his award and tried to attack me out in town. And his weapon was not poisoned. Unfortunately, at the time, I beat him with light armor on, so I wasn't really wearing anything. So when he attacked me, I was like, oh, getting messed up out in town. There we go. Sometimes these deaths are easy, sometimes they're. Not so easy. Depends on, on their skill level. Alright, let's try one of my combos. Up, right, down, and then back to here. Well, that didn't do it. Try it again. You're messing up my 
combos. Choose weapons for the next duel. Our warriors will fight with hunting swords. Hereby declare the victor in this round and shall proceed to the next round. The first combatant will be Henry of Scullets from the company of Sir Ratsay Kabbalah. And his adversary will be Calder of the Tar, Catchbowl of the Ratai Bailiff. Let us wish the combatants luck. Yeah, it's basically a guard. This guy's much better than the last guy I fought. I don't know what just happened there, but that's cool. I don't know about you guys, but I've always wanted to check out like doing HEMA sports and stuff. You uh, pad up in full armor and just beat their shit out of there. I don't want to do 1v1, I'd probably get wrecked, but I'm down to try out like uh, 2v2 or 3v3. It's expensive to go buy out all your own armor and equipment though. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I'd be I'd pretty do pretty decent at like uh distant management. I've done a little fencing at the uh Renaissance Fair. Pretty fun. Alright, let's try one of these combos. If he would stand still. to waste all the stamina and do something. Ah! 
As you can tell, I like to stab a lot. combat skills in this round and emerge victorious, he shall proceed to the next round of the Ratai Tournay. Okay, now he's back. And off the bat, am I losing? There we go. There's a good one. Let's try the new one. And it didn't work. Alright, let's try setting it up then. Let me set that. Combo up. Alright, we'll just come back to it later. Who's got more strength though? I think it's me. Pretty good. A little damage. Not bleeding though, so we're good. Ooh, that did a bunch of damage. Pretty good. Or they have more reach. Lords and ladies. 
ladies, good men and good wives, you have just witnessed the final duel in today's Ratai Tournay, for which we all owe gratitude to Sir Hanush of Lipa. All glory to the victor, Henry of Skelets, man at arms in the company of Sir Ratzik Kobila. His prize will be given to him by our gracious Sir Hanush. Put on a hell of a show, Henry. Here's your hard-earned reward. Thank you, Sir Hanush. God be with you. I don't think it's any better than the one I'm wearing. Yeah, it's not. It just looks different. Alright guys, as you can see, the weather is still horrible, but I've been pushing out this quest. Is that some... Alright guys, as you can see, the weather is still horrible. I've been pushing out this quest forever. The DLC uh, was Sir Radzig, my father. I'm going to talk to him real quick and start it up. God be with you, Henry. Congratulations on winning the tournament. I'm proud of you. Father, can I ask you about something? Of course, Henry. I thought since we drove Toth out of the province, things would be better. I mean that the roads would be safer and so on, and, um... Well, that's not entirely the case. Ah, the naivety of youth. Driving him out of the province was only the start. He left a lot of cutthroats behind, and they'll be sticking to their trade. And what's more, as long as there's a war going on, problems like this will keep coming up. Well, what can we do about it? Not an awful lot, unfortunately. My garrison is a shamble these days. I lost most of my men in Scalitz, and what I'm left with after Privislavitz is hardly enough even to guard Pigstein. Let alone guarding the roads and patrolling the rest of the province. I simply don't have the men. Uh-huh. I understand. That is, I didn't have the men. As it happens, you've come at just the right time. Recently, I asked an old acquaintance for help. Sir Kuno of Rickwald and his mercenary band. The men who ride with him are a rough lot, mostly former convicts, but they're as capable as any squad of soldiers. Well, excuse me for being so bold, but there's plenty of mercenaries around. Surely you can find a more... respectable band? You have a point, lad, but I'd like to tell you I talked to Kuno because I trust him. But actually, my reasons are of a more pragmatic nature. You see, Kuno owes me a favor, so he'll serve me free of charge. So, you want me to join them? Yes, but that's not all. I told Kuno I'd send him a guide. But really what I need is for someone to keep a close eye on him and his men. Someone reliable. And I'd say you fit the part. Go and report to him at his encampment. You'll ride with his band on patrols and make sure they don't get too... disorderly. Let's find out why he owes him. How is he indebted to you? I did him quite a big service, actually. I saved him from the hangman. Oh, that sounds like quite a story. How did it happen? You should ask him. You'll be spending quite a while riding together, so it'll help pass the time. But one thing I can tell you, he seems to have taken inspiration from me. A lot of his men had their own encounters with the Executioner, too. Who is this Sir Kuno of Rickwald? He's the last baron of the House of Rickwald, which became impoverished. So he took to the mercenary trade, like many poor noblemen do. Unless they become robbers, which often isn't all that different. He's certainly an entertaining companion, but as a mercenary, well, let's just say he has his own particular approach to certain matters. That sounds a little worrying. Oh, it's nothing too bad. Just that now and again he needs reminding not to step over the line. All right. I'll go and report to him. Excellent. He set up camp between Ratai and Ledechko. It's a good base for covering the province. Good luck, Henry. And watch out for yourself. I will, sir. Thanks. Alright, guys. I think the video is long enough. We're going to end it here. And the next video will be coming up to Kuno's encampment. Right outside of Ledechko. And we'll be introducing ourselves to him and the rest of his band. Sorry that the video is this long already. But the next one's going to be a lot more action-packed, I promise. I hope that you guys are having a terrific day. And leave a comment down below. How difficult you think a tournament back in the Renaissance era would have been. How many bouts do you think you would have done?
I think it would have been pretty similar to uh, how they portrayed it in A Knight's Tale with, uh, with Heath Ledger. But let me know what you guys think. And if, if you could have competed in a medieval tournament, what kind of weapon would you have used and competed in?